Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Enkeleda Lushi. I'm an assistant prof at New Jersey Institute of Technology in New Jersey. Uh, I will talk to you about some recent work that I've done with uh, undergraduate students, uh, Catherine Wall and Nathaniel Metzny. Uh, they started this work in the summer, so it's very new and very ongoing. And uh, uh, my postdoc, Shang Guan Chiu, is continuing this. Uh, so before I continue, I want to thank everyone for attending and thank the organizers for inviting me in this. Um, so um, aligning particles in confinement. Um, you've heard last week near God's talk about uh, collective behavior of particles. And uh, we know a lot about connected behavior nowadays. We can find it across many scales from uh, nanoscale and microscale, right? So it's things like bacteria, algae, spermatozoa, even colloids nowadays. And to larger scales, uh, we have crickets, uh, robots, birds, fishes, even humans uh, can collectively organize and move together. So you can have one motile unit, could be self-propelled, but lately people are looking into rotating units as well. And it interacts with others. But the interaction then depends on, well, the type of unit, the active unit, whether it's self-propelling, rotating, uh, in the medium, right? So it interacts with neighbors and then you get collective behavior, right? So collective behavior, you can find it across scales and in a lot of mediums. So there is a lot of study uh, on this uh, the last few decades. People want to understand it, characterize it. Why is it uh, important? Well, a lot of people are studying this and my work has been mostly on confinement. Right? And what we observe in nature and in the lab, it's usually in some sort of confinement. So my motivation comes from uh, studying active matter in confinement. I've worked a lot with swimming bacteria. So simulations of bacteria in circle or channel confinement and also other types of active matter. So uh, here on the left, you have simulations and experiments of uh, bacteria, which are self-propelled units and in a circle, Right, so that's that movie there, or in a droplet, circular droplet, right? So cylindrical in a shape, squashed between two plates. Uh, it will uh, organize spontaneously into this kind of vertical arrangement. So collectively, they will start to circulate left or right. And um, as long as they have oxygen, they will continue to do so. In a channel, uh, they will start to flow in one direction. If the channel width is uh, small enough, right? And um, how does this organization come to be? Well, uh, this bacteria, at least in experiments, they're elongated bacteria. So collisions and the shapes are important, but most importantly, the medium, right? They live in the fluid and as they move, they disturb the fluid and hence disturb the neighbors, right? With this fluid. And then you get this, uh, that affects the organization, right? So these are specifically pusher swimmers, right? So we'll talk about them later. Here on the right, we have uh, quinker rotors, right? So uh, they rotate because of the electrical fields, but then rotating particles on top of a surface, they will start rolling. So technically they become self-propelling particles. And then in confinement, right? They will start to, in a racetrack, they will start to circulate, uh, sorry, right? So flow in one direction. And uh, in a circle, they will start also moving around like a circular dish. Uh, slightly different modes of organization. You can see that the bacteria are kind of uniform in density, while the colloids, you can see these uh, waves, density waves, okay? So two bacteria are known to interact because of the fluid, each bacterium, and if you can see, it generates this kind of dipolar, force dipolar fluid flow, right? Hyperbolic fluid comes in the middle, goes out in the front and back, and that helps two of them kind of align and co-swim. And you see this in experiments, that's how they interact. However, um, if you talk to anyone uh, with a background in hydrodynamics, doing simulations and couplings, like the full fluid uh, structure interaction of swimmers and the fluid, then confinement is quite difficult, not just computationally, but also the modeling, right? It's a logistic nightmare. So uh, we always want to look for simpler models, right? That we don't solve such a hard problem. So we came up with a very, very simple model Okay. So we have each particle self-propels, right? It has a position right? and the direction. Um, one can change the speed, but we set it at one. Um, and then um, 
we use the Vichek model for the direction. So each particle um, aligns with the neighbors within a certain radius, right? So queries the, the position of the neighbors within this radius and then um, takes the average of that radius, right? So the Vichek model is very well known, has been around for over 25 years. People have studied it a lot, right? So this is what these equations essentially show, right? The particle position and orientation. What we do, however, uh, we add a size to this particle. The typical Vichek model is just a point particle. We use disks, which means they have a size and uh, also we had forces, but they don't collide. So it's kind of a hybrid model between the Vichek model and active Brownian particle models, which are just self-propelling disks. And uh, what does this model do, right? So we look at it in unconfined spaces, right? I mean, Vichek model is well studied, so is the ABP model, um, specifically periodic uh, domains. So if the aligning radius or interaction radius is one, they're technically not interacting, right? R is uh, uh, the radius, right, or size. So uh, essentially what you see at low densities is this gas-like behavior. So they will move randomly and collide, right? So the resulting behavior is gas-like. Uh, if you increase the density, right? You will just get a lot of uh, jammed clusters, right? Um, so they are essentially interacting just uh, by collisions, right? So they have self-propulsion. And to, to, uh, to determine the behavior at this point, we're not using noise, but that can be added in the model. Right? The noise just kind of disrupts a lot of the behavior. So what happens when you increase this interaction radius? Well, at low density with slightly higher dense, like they start to communicate and align their directions. So you start to see clusters moving in one direction. You start to see small clusters that are moving together. You increase the density a little bit more. And again, the information will propagate, right? Uh, the information about the direction, you will see a lot of them moving. So this is kind of a laning behavior, right? They're kind of moving in one lane. Uh, and uh, right, so remember all the interaction here is uh, just self-propulsion of collisions, right? So they don't overlap. And there is also uh, this aligning radius, right? So R2, right? Knowing that the particle size is one, but then that kind of propagates, right? The higher density, they do align faster because they are, uh, they communicate, right? Faster. So, uh, oops. That's the same one. So in periodic domain, sorry, I didn't write here, you get the gas light state at low densities, or if you increase interaction or radius, you do get these clusters that move together in one direction. At high densities, if uh, there is no interaction radius, you just get these jammed clusters or they move uh, kind of this laning behavior. And we can characterize this um, by looking at uh, uh, specific parameters like average per, uh, velocity, average normal speed, uh, cluster sizes, and at high densities we can look at uh, the hexagonal bond order to see if they are jammed into crystals and uh, uh, can even make phase diagrams. So this is what the undergraduates uh, did. I'm very, very proud of their work. So if you look at the align, like if you fix the box size and uh, uh, then query various alignment radius and area fraction, you can get the gas-like state, clustering or laning. And at very, very high densities, you can actually get crystals that move together in a, in a tight formation. So can even look at then uh, fixing the domain size and then looking at various area fractions and radiuses. So obviously the, the size of the box matters because it's not truly unconfined, it's periodic. Right? So one can characterize this uh, in more details. But as I mentioned, we're looking in confinement. So how do you adapt this model for confinement? Well, we use the ideas from hydrodynamics. Essentially, we put a mirror image on the other side of the wall, right? The method of images is well known in electrostatics, hydrodynamics, and so on. So we put a ghost particle on the other side of the wall uh, with the same uh, orientation. And then the particles not only align with this ghost uh, 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 particle, right, the mirror particles, but also can collide with them. So 
uh, it's dual. Uh, so it not only takes care of the interaction, but also the confinement. Right? So that's for computational reasons to keep the cost low. So we can look at circles and racetracks. Right? So what kind of behavior do we see? Uh, we will see this in detail. We get to see wall hugging, clusters, sloshing, and certain other states. So if the particles are essentially non-aligning, the aligning uh, radius is just one, that means they're not aligning, non-interacting, they're just self-propelling. And with no noise, sooner or later, they will hit the wall, right? They will come at the wall and there's nothing else affecting them. They will just stay at the wall. So they are wall hugging, right? They will stay at the wall there. So this is what the gas-like state that we saw in the periodic or unconfined domain, this is what it translates to, right? It translates into wall hugging. Uh, what happens if you have high density? Um, similar idea, right? Uh, a lot of them that will hit the wall will stay there. Other ones will kind of have their own giant clusters uh, in between. So you have, uh, uh, so this is what those large clusters in unconfined domains translate to in this confinement. But then what happens when you have uh, some aligning radius, right? So now they start to communicate and interact but they also hit the wall. So, and the wall then directs these clusters. Right? So you'll get clustering because of the aligning and then the wall essentially will direct them. So you will get clusters moving along the boundary, right? And depending on the density, it could be a few clusters, right? So in this example, you can see three clusters. Um, there is, uh, um, so this is what the clustering state in unconfined domains, this is what it translates to, right? So now they cruise along the wall. Right? So we have cruising clusters and uh, uh, we can increase the, uh, the radius, right? Again, here's another example. Again, cruising clusters that can interact right? and merge and separate and so on. Right? Um, oops, let's say it again. And if we increase the density even higher and the interaction radius is high, uh, then essentially they become one large cluster. One can even do a back of the paper calculation when this transition happens. And this cluster just kind of sloshes around circle domain, right? So it's kind of in a tight pack. And uh, this is what that laning essentially of the unconfined uh, domains, this is what this translates to when we put it inside the circle, right? So the aligning helps it align, but remember they're also aligning with the mirror images. So you have this cluster that is just sloshing. Um, and uh, my undergrad students love to call the, the wall hugging, they call it the porcupine state because all directions are held. But essentially we see this uh, states, right? If you fix the domain size, you see this wall hugging, clusters, sloshing, and at very high densities, you can even see uh, crystals that just move the orientation, which makes sense. And we can characterize this more specifically, and I won't go into details in the talk, but we can look at uh, circulation order parameter, uh, uh, average normalized speeds, cluster size, and hexagonal bulk order to determine exactly uh, where all the states are. So for example, this circulation order parameter tells us if things are circulating. So if there is no interaction or radius, they're mostly, um, the particles are hugging the wall, and painting outside, so the circulation order parameter is uh, negative. Um, and uh, if they're circulating, is, we can put a cutoff at more than 0 0.5. So, um, and anything in between is, uh, we have to look at other parameters in more detail. So by looking at these parameters, we can even run hundreds of simulations to kind of do a better uh, 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 phase diagram, right? And we can kind of characterize this like the, the wall hugging, the clusters and so on, right? I won't uh, go into this in detail because we are running a bit short. Um, I mentioned racetracks, right? In the lab, that is essentially an annulus. Uh, for mathematicians, if you want to uh, simulate this, you look at the channel because it can be geometrically similar and it's easier to simulate. So you have wall on the top and the bottom and it's periodic on the sides. So that's uh, easier computationally. And we also see certain behaviors here, right? So we'll uh, illustrate this. So if you have no interaction, right? So you fix the wall height and 
uh, you have low density. Um, the particles can either heat the wall and stay there, so this is wall hugging, uh, or they could also get lucky and kind of stay in the middle of the channel, just cruising parallel to the walls because they have no other obstacles to stop them, right? So there's, there is nothing here that is changing their direction, right? There is just collisions and confinement. Um, if you increase the density a little bit more, the same idea, they will either end up at the wall and hug the wall, or they can form uh, intermediate clusters at much higher density. Right? So there is not, uh, it's not as interesting in a way. But then once you add an interaction radius, right? So now they're interacting with each other and also their mirror images. So you will get to see clusters. And these clusters will cruise along the wall because the wall is directing them, right? So you will see clusters uh, moving in all in one direction or at this uh, example here in the bottom, the clusters are moving in opposite direction, right? Alongside the wall. So again, these are cruising clusters that the walls are directing which direction to go. And remember they're aligning with the mirror images as well. We can increase the, the density and then and the interaction radius. And then something interesting happens because the interaction radius is higher and the information propagates much faster and they align pretty quickly and you will get them moving and don't see as much density variation. Right? So again, you will see clusters. This one is not playing, uh, but you will see a, right, so a more uniform kind of streaming. Right? And this is what those leaning states essentially translate to when you put them in a channel confinement. And we can even get uh, moving crystals. I didn't do a movie for this, sorry. Uh, but at very high densities, uh, you can get the particles that have tight formations and essentially move together. So here you can see uh, um, essentially crystals, which are tight formation particles are locked and they just move together right, in a pack. And um, this is the phase diagram my students did. You can see bordering or wall hugging. You can get streaming, uh, which can be either uniform or in clusters, one or two lanes. This is how they characterized it. We can do a better job at characterizing this by looking at, again at certain parameters. For example, looking at the average velocity, average speed, um, and seeing how these uh, essentially translate, right? So we can characterize the wall hugging, the clustering, uh, clusters, and uh, this uh, streaming behavior. Okay, so I don't know what am I doing in time, but uh, we uh, made the hybrid uh, V-check, uh, like a model that is in between the V-check model and the active Brownian particles. Each one of these models has been well studied, um, a lot of it in uh, unconfined spaces or periodic, but we wanted to put this in confinement. So, uh, Specifically, we put the size in the V-check model uh, or aligning in the AVP model. Right? And we uh, made the rules for how they behave in confinement, essentially the mirror imaging. And um, we saw very interesting behavior, which is not, as in, not intuitive. Right? So we could, and this depended on the confinement size relative to the particle, the interaction distance or aligning radius, and also the particle density or area fraction, right? This is 2D. And of course, understanding the behavior in various confinements can enable us to uh, look, uh, direct this better or control better, right? And this is one of the simplest models and yet gave such uh, complex behavior. Right? So there is a lot here to, to do. And uh, I picked this topic because, well, undergraduates worked on this and uh, uh, I thought it would be interesting for graduate students to see uh, a topic that is uh, well known in a way, but also kind of new directions to this. So uh, with this, I will uh, conclude. And if you have any questions, uh, I mean, you're always welcome. Thank you to... very much for the, sorry. You're Thank you for the presentation. We have many, many questions. Um, we can, we answer the questions at the end, right? So the first question, yeah, no. so now we will ask a few questions. We have plenty of time, like six minutes. So are ghost particles, particles can only pair with the respective partner 
or any particles within the radius still? Any particles, right? So the ghost particle is there um, for both confinement and aligning. So when we're looking at neighbors, right, for aligning purposes, we also align with the ghost particles that are within this radius. And so um, it's kind of an idea borrowed from hydrodynamics, right? The mirror image doesn't interact just with, like a particle doesn't interact just with its own mirror, but um, with the other images as well. Okay. Just a clarification, there was no noise in this system? Or, or there was? No noise. So what we no find noise. is that the noise essentially disrupts a lot of this behavior, right? So you increase the noise, uh, we wanted to look at, well, essentially it's a deterministic system, right? To just uh, get the pure behavior first. Okay. And then. Is the direction of circulation clockwise or counterclockwise or random? Is there any it's sort a, of parallelity in the system? That's my uh, question. It just emerges by itself. It could be either uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, I don't think we can predict per se because it will depend on the initial directions and positions. So um, but that would be an interesting okay. question also to check. So Kinjal Das Biswas ask if you can explain a little more how you implement hydrodynamic interactions. So there are no hydrodynamic Is it interactions. only between a particle and a wall? Right. So it's uh, do there you is also no consider inner particle. Okay, no hydrodynamic groups. Uh, sorry. Um, so there are no hydrodynamic interactions. Uh, the reason being uh, that hydrodynamics is long ranged. So if you do the interaction of uh, a particle with uh, the walls, you have to do with every particle, right? So it's very long range. And this is why we came up with this model, which is computationally easier because you only have to consider interactions with neighboring particles. So computationally, this helps significantly. Right? Um, so we only have to uh, uh, consider those. So it's kind of a hack. Right? It's not hydrodynamic model, but it's the V-check model um, that still lets us understand a bit more. So, Fael Petrosian asks, what is the idea behind having a mirror image of particles on the other side of the circular boundary? Can such thing occur in nature or be experimentally designed? Uh, so, this is essentially a, a, a simple way to mimic hydrodynamics, but it's not long ranged. Right? Because if you do it hydrodynamic, we have to consider much, much longer distances. Interactions are much further. Um, here, we just want a simple alignment, right, to uh, modify the V-check model. Um, and in nature, we have these interactions, right? Hydrodynamics does align particles to the boundaries for pusher swimmers. Um, so that's kind of an inspiration, but uh, not all. OK. So here on the, at the wall, Besides the steric interaction with the wall, there is this interaction with yes. the other particle, the ghost particle? Yes. So there is uh, collisions and also aligning interactions with, uh, with the ghost particles. Okay, so from Maslen Moradi, does the behavior of swimmers clustering is different for puller versus pusher swimmers? So I suppose we don't. Um, so since we don't have hydrodynamics, it's not pushers or pullers. It's just uh, aligning. It, it uh, is. It's a, it's a but. Uh, okay. I mean, in pusher and puller systems, since I worked on those, the clustering also is different. Uh, different from each other, and different from this. Okay. From Nancy, for you change the rules for alignment such that a particle aligns more strongly with nearby particles than with further away particles against with some again with some cutoff. 
would you expect to eventually reach the same phases or would the phase boundary shift? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Right? We can certainly do a kind of more Gaussian kind of or different cutoffs. We haven't looked into this, but I do expect it would affect a little bit the uh, uh, different uh, boundaries will shift them a bit depending on the strength and the cutoff. Uh, so, are the ghost particles mirror images, or is the entire span of the confine periodically repeated? Could so this work be expanded to study connected particles, such as a simple worm-like chain model? Can certainly expand For example, this to study polymers to, to uh, connected uh, particles. And uh, for the for the mirroring, we both have the images, the ghost particles for the wall mirrors, but also the periodic uh, expansion, right? So we also have to do uh, those. 